takes care of most of the tasks. <laughs> so, you know, he, uh, yeah, a lot of the work goes, goes behind the scenes, go, it goes to Wayne. Um, there was about 150 people there. Um, I was asked, what was our number one priority? The number one priority is figuring out how we can increase the number of regulars so that there's some continuity to this. If I move away, I want to make sure, and also the number of people who are interested in potentially organizing it. Um, if I move away to a new city, I'd like to see the Bay Area still have a regular community, sort of ultimately growing into a chapter. And I heard a lot of people be like, well, I'm talking about, well, when are you gonna, it's gonna turn into a chapter? You know, you're getting a fair number of people, but um, yeah, first things first. Um, let's get a community first. Um, I, we had some of the interesting events were, there was a retrospective on the crisis at the WMF, sort of a, um, a quieter session, it was not recorded. Um, that was interesting, I'm not sure, some, some people that, that won't mean anything to, but and the, to the ones who, do, who it does mean something to already know all about it, so not gonna spend much more time on that. There was a strategy session at the end um, where we sort of brainstormed, and I think one of the things I was hearing from that was, uh, it would be nice to figure out how contributing to Wikipedia helps people in their professional careers or in their just so that it's something more tangible for them. I heard from somebody about how, you know, he made all these edits, but he wasn't sure what his ultimate reward was. Um, we, I talked to a journalist about trying to figure out a partnership between journalists and Wikipedians because they may not realize it, but we're constantly reading their editorial policies and uh, whether or not they have fact checking. And um, sometimes we're contacting them. And so she was, she was the president of the largest journalism association in America and was, seemed very gung-ho about um, figuring out how to, I don't know, be better at journalism. <laughs> um, and I went on a pub crawl. I, you know, I, and that's pretty much my update. I, I think we just have to be persistent about these types of things, getting, building a bigger community and not getting, not losing hope. So um, that was a lot longer than I expected. So here you go, Wayne. Hi there. My name is Wayne. My username is Checking Facts, F A X. And um, I knew about Wikiconference North America from the, all the banner ads that were always in my way. And uh, then one day, I got an email from Richard in uh, New York, and he said that somebody from Bay Area Wiki Salon should come to San Diego and represent um, the Wiki Salon. So, <clears throat> so I asked around, and I drew the long straw. So, so I went to San Diego. They told me that they had a scholarship set aside for uh, one of us. So I thought, cool. So uh, I calculated the expenses. I didn't realize that the scholarship could include meals. So I only did airfare and hotel. But after they approved my scholarship, it was like one fourth of what it would take to cover that. So I regrouped and reserved a room or a bunk at the downtown hostel. And I wasn't looking forward to that completely, especially if I got stuck, if I got stuck on an upper bunk and fell off it in the middle of the night or couldn't get up and down the little ladder or something. So uh, anyway, the hostel turned out to be a fabulous experience because they have all kinds of amenities. It has a full gourmet kitchen. They have 24-hour staff. They, they have maids to keep things clean to a certain point. And um, so there was a dorm with 10 beds. And out of the 10 beds, six of us ended up being at the conference. 
And as a matter of fact, I was supposed to meet with a fellow named Gerald, who was the official photographer. And I, I thought I was in room 308, and I was trying to hook up with him, and he said he was in room 208. So I was texting him back and forth through this program called Slack, or Slacks. I don't even know the name of it. And uh, trying to hook up with him in person, and then this guy turns over from the next bunk and says, are you Wayne? <laughs> so w one by one, started to realize who in the room was uh, Wikimedia. Nobody had a name tag on or any, any way to know for sure. But slowly, I met a fellow uh, in a bunk across the way who was from Tunisia, and he lives in Montreal, and he works on Wikidata and Arabic Wiki, Wikipedia. And then the, the head of photography was in the bunk next to me, and then Caddy Corner was another photographer, and then a person who uses the pronoun she was in the upper bunk across from me, Val, and um, <clears throat> Val was represented representing you and women uh, through social media. And Val turned out to be a pretty amazing person. So I met all these people. We, we got free breakfast at the hostel. So we'd meet upstairs and have breakfast together. And then I didn't want to burn myself out walking to the library. Actually, our first day was at Balboa Park, and that, that was really amazing because they gave us access to all 15 museums, including an upgrade to a cannibal exhibition and um, <clears throat> some backstage tours. And I volunteered to do registration, so I ended up registering people for backstage tours instead of going on backstage tours. But I finally did go on the cannibal tour. And um, yeah, it was, it was amazing to meet so many people and to be at Balboa Park, which was a terrific venue, and then the San Diego Public Central Library, which is three years old, next to the Petco Park where the Padres play. And the library is so tall that it looks, it's nine stories tall, it looks down into the stadium. From, from, the, from a balcony next to one of our meeting rooms. And we, we took over all the meeting rooms in the whole building, including the uh, auditorium. And I ended up being a videographer, mostly in the auditorium. So I got to see keynote speeches and main speeches all day long. For one thing, I wanted to see Pax's presentation and Pax bagged the uh, auditorium. And then uh, part about when he got started, Catherine Marr made a point of coming in and watching Pax's presentation. So I thought that was a tip of the hat. And and uh, the Balboa Park staff, um, library staff was amazing in supporting us. And I ended up being a volunteer for all four days for every track and every presentation. I didn't just, like, we were just supposed to work like two hours for one day. And I ended up working like eight hours for four days. <laughs> and by the fourth day, uh, everybody else had left town. So I was like, the senior volunteer. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open it up to questions. Anybody have a question? If you need a microphone, there's one over there. Or you can just holla. What inspired me the most was 
downtime, going, going, to like, going to La Jolla Cove in an Uber with five guys and having one of them be a, like a professional tour guide of La Jolla Cove and the other one being an amateur paleontologist telling us what all the lines in the cove men and stuff. And then breakfast at the hostel and going out to a big dinner here and a small dinner there. And, and they, had, they had a couple lunches where we got to mix things up. And then at the end of the conference, we were able to share our takeaways. By that time, most people had left town, but there were still about maybe 45, 50 people left. So we heard a lot of stories. But my mind's kind of mush about the individual presentations because I saw so many. But I would say Pax's was the best. <laughs> Anybody else? So I'm Pax, Fun Crunch on English Wikipedia, Commons, all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, yeah, I was really happy to go to the Wiki conference. My presentation was called The Transgender Gap. It was basically about my experience being a transgender person editing Wikipedia and some of my concerns about the coverage of trans people and issues that concern us and safety issues concerning transgender editors on Wikipedia. I had given talks before about transgender issues, but mostly to crowds that were specifically interested in social justice, uh, animal rights issues, and uh, things like that. Um, so I wasn't sure exactly what to expect from this crowd, and I was uh, worried that it would be a much more conservative audience and I would get some invasive or inappropriate questions, but none of that happened. People were really uh, thankful. People came up to me throughout the three days that I was there at the conference uh, thanking me and asking me uh, for contact information and more information. Everybody was really respectful, and I think I really made some good connections. So I'm very glad that I came and gave the presentation and hope to uh, continue with that and do more talks of this nature, hopefully come do something for Wikimania in August. Uh, I'm already thinking about that. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just really great to meet up with people, some of whom I knew only by their you know online handle. <laughs> and um, I like that it was you know North America wide, so we had some Mexican and uh, Canadian uh, people in attendance as well. And um, just to, that I like that um, Indigenous Peoples Day was featured, and that it was specifically called Indigenous Peoples Day and not Columbus Day, which I thought was a great thing, and that there was a spotlight on content related to uh, Indigenous people and keynote speech uh, and another uh, talk specifically on that. So I really felt that um, it was a very inclusive, I mean, that activity, and I, I feel that it really did live up to that. Uh, hope to have a very inclusive uh, Wikipedia. So um, yeah, very positive experience. My partner came with me as well. He's made, I think, one edit on Wikipedia ever. So <laughs> I told him, you know, if you want to duck out and go on a bike ride or something during the, some of the sessions, you know, feel free. And he did some of that. But he actually, you know, attended a number of sessions too, not just my own, and had some good conversations and made connections with people as well. So yeah, a very positive experience. Um, and my presentation's online. Um, if you come up to me after, I can give you my handle and it's linked from my English Wikipedia page. It's fun crunch if you want to look it up. Um, anyone have any questions? Yep. I've, 
See, I, I feel like, you know, I've kind of, it's kind of been a learning experience this year. I mean, the first time I ever came to the Wikipedia Foundation was in January for Wikipedia 15. And before that, I knew nothing about the WMF or any of the politics involved or anything. And once I started to learn about that, I was like, whoa, okay. But I feel like, you know, that's part of why I was a little nervous, but I feel like a lot of my negative experiences with Wikipedia were actually coming from the peop the editors and not from the WMF, if that makes sense. And it was mostly anonymous, not necessarily IP and not address anonymous, but people who I didn't, you know, know the names of who were making the, you know, vandalizing and harassing and that kind of thing. And that really colored my experience, but I felt like that was not, you know, the fault of the WMF at all. You know, I mean, there are certain, certainly things that the WMF could do to reduce harassment, and that's part of what the Inspire campaign was about. And I actually submitted um, an idea to the Inspire campaign, which became an RFC, which actually did get support to uh, change the permissions for uh, pages in the user space. So I'm very excited about that happening. Um, but yeah, as far as what could be done, I feel like I only have a narrow perspective on it. I mean, I can speak as a queer person, as a trans person, as a black person, but that's about it. I can't speak to the experience of women on Wikipedia specifically, even though I have lived experience as a woman. I don't claim to speak for women. I can't speak for people for other ethnic identities, et cetera. So I don't want to say, oh, it's just rosy and wonderful for everybody, or oh, it's just horrible and awful for everybody. I can only speak to what I've seen. And I, my biggest challenge is just trying to, you know, avoid harassment, avoid vandalism of pages involving trans issues, genderqueer issues, because that's been a huge problem, and um, have greater representation of people of color and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm looking at. Sorry if that didn't really answer your question specifically, but yeah, sure. Can I take a picture of you all when I, while I'm up here? You all have to be here, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, Pac sparked a couple comments for me. I've always I've always seen statistics on Wikipedia that I've doubted to a certain extent. Like there's only you know 0.1 percent of editors are women. I'm exaggerating, but. Uh, <laughs> I hear numbers. I hear numbers like five percent, ten percent, eleven percent, six percent, and I would say nobody disclosed what their sex was at the conference. But just guessing, it's very low. Women at the conference and people of color was very low, and. Disabled, I would say zero. Maybe one person with a cane. Maybe two. One guy had kind of a shopping cart full of stuff that he pushed around. But very undiverse. Right, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm disabled, so I don't look disabled, but I am. Um, yeah, I'm just saying, just kind of a glossed over appearance. The appearance was that it was not diverse for a lot of, a lot of reasons. And then also I wanted to mention for next month, the third, third uh, last Wednesday of November, I bumped into Catherine Marr at the conference, and this is boring for employees, but I got her to agree to mix with us on November 30th. She's busy, she was busy tonight, but she said she would come November 30th, and then the next day I asked her, are we really on? And she showed me her iPhone, and we're in there, so. 
unless unless something pops up that <laughs> I figure she has a handler. So we thought that would be interesting, just to, on non-presentation months, just to have somebody interesting walking around that people can have organic conversations with. <laughs> We just want to have, we want to, the, I know, the, the month April when we had the transgender panel and the author and the uh, library person, that was our biggest uh, wiki salon. Yeah, the first one, we had 100 RSVPs and 50 people show up approximately. A lot of that had to do with Pete Forsyth. He, he did a lot of promotion, and he did a lot of uh, preparation, and he expanded the uh, the panel and the topic, and and he was a great moderator. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We we do want to open it up to anybody who wants to say something, but. I think one thing about, um, yeah, figuring out how to how to draw a bigger crowd, we we could be more organized in that. Um, if anybody has any ideas, then we would be happy to hear from them. But um, yeah, do you want to say something? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not super discouraged in general. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Yep, yep. And that is one problem we have, which is that um, I have a full time job, and we are all, we're also sort of scrambling to like, oh, what are we gonna do? Because we don't have a speaker sometimes. So as we get, hopefully, as we get better at like figuring out two or three months of lead time. What we're going to do that'll be better. Um, yeah, balancing um, yeah my busy life and and uh, and Wayne's. Wiki Conference North America interrupted me a little bit, and then I ended up staying down there to hang out with my second cousin once removed and my second cousins, who I had I didn't know about the second cousins and I hadn't seen the once removed in like 53 years, so. That was pretty special. And I ended up videotaping some family history that he told me. So anyway, I came back late from that. And I, I didn't do that whole, like, eight days. I, I didn't even touch a laptop. So, so, I mean, we're slowly growing a listserv of people who've came. Has, has anybody ever, like, when we sent out an email, has anybody ever said, unsubscribe me? Yeah, so nobody said, oh, we don't want to hear from you anymore. And so as that grows, and we're trying to keep our communications light so that does happen, you know, once a month. Um, and we will send one out a lot earlier, I think, with this Catherine thing. We may even send two. Because the other thing about doing it a week before is that if you do it, you know, the beginning of the month, people forget. It's deleted, if you, especially if it doesn't have, like, click, put my calendar. Um, so if you do it a week before, some people are like, you know, my, my schedule is rarely scheduled in advance for more than a week um, personally. But, um, but, yeah, balancing the... I'm I'm personally like a person who just like if somebody sends me like too many emails I'm like boom I'm unsubscribe can't can't handle it I'm not sure how about it, how everybody is so I'm sensitive to that I don't know if, but you guys have any thoughts about that I mean two a month is probably okay right three a month is too much oh yeah 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 hadn't heard yeah 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 yeah. Yep, yep. I think I think um, one thing we will try to be very careful of is if it's not going to happen, we will give a lot of lead time because we want this to be a very regular thing. And that's also why it's very casual. And I'm like, we're not going to be doing a ton of promotion because also, like, if you do a lot of promotion, we had one gentleman who came here and he was sort of expecting more of a presentation. And, you know, we don't want to, like, promote a lot if it's just going to be just a casual get-together. So 
Um, and those are kind of like the, yeah. So looking ahead a little bit, because uh, last Wednesday of December falls after the beginning of Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa, we're going to move December back by a week to the 21st of December. So we're, we're trying to plan ahead. And also this month, at the last minute, we almost had to move our venue. And so it, it kind of took the wind out of my sails. I'm not sure that's just a personal thing, but I kind of get on the momentum and I, I love this month. Yeah, this, this month, I think it was this month. That's next month? Oh, okay. Yeah, communication could be slightly better in terms of like, yeah, we found out kind of just because I sent an email that, you know, we had a conflict. <laughs> yeah, and then there's another event tomorrow at this very place. I mean, you guys may be aware of that. So that, if we had combined those two events, I think it would have been a lot better chance for people to mix up and meet each other and taking some of the pressure off of us to be like, okay, we got to figure out how to, you know, make this an event. <laughs> um, but it was good to talk about this Weekly Conference North America, all of these you know, one one strategy they had at Wiki, one strategy they had at Wiki Conference North America was to have a presentation in the middle in a big room, and off in the corner, people were having a little edit-a-thon or something in a giant room. So there can be there can be multitasking on the same night in a room that's as big as this. People can spread out. Yeah, I mean, another thing that I'm sort of aware of and think, and think about is that we advertise on this meetup group, Wikipedia Tech, but these meetups aren't exactly technical, so um, it, it makes me, like, poor Juan here showed up hoping to hack with a bunch of uh, MediaWiki people, and, you know, there's, there's not too many, but um, we can still make it interesting. So, yeah, um, it, ideally, in the long run, I would have, I have some ideas for that, but... I'm not sure I have the time. Um, one, one talk I will do at some point, who knows when, is a talk on how to balance volunteering with a professional life. <laughs> um, and, uh, and all the technical tools that may make it easier, but also might just be a rabbit hole. Um, yeah. So December 21st, our presenter is going to be Jim Hefe, who pretty much runs the Wikipedia Tea House. He's, he was one of the first people in there and, and had a lot to do with the way it is and he answers a lot of questions and he also made a presentation at the, at the Wiki conference. My presentation was not accepted. Ben did a lightning talk at the last minute when I got drafted to do something else he, he put together a lightning talk with, uh, with slides and all kinds of stuff in like four minutes. Uh, yeah, that's like last minute doing your paper um, in college. So we want to open it up to anybody who wants to make any announcements, right? Are we done? Felix has an announcement. I don't know if Frank might have, I might have an announcement here, but... <laughs> So uh, this is, uh, I'm Felix Kramer, this is my second time here, and uh, a month ago I came and talked about this project that I've been involved in called the Climate Congress Wikipedia Project, and since the last time we launched the project, uh, a day, a month and a day before the election, uh, and it's basically uh, a, a, a separate wiki that uh, contains information about candidates and incumbents for Congress and what they say and do about climate change. And we have all the senators, 33 senators and, and the challengers, and about 12% of the, of the members of the House uh, covered here. And basically, it's objective information, not uh, partisan, and it contains in it a paragraph called a draft summary for Wikipedia, which is a distillation of a lot more research saying this is the kind of information want to move over to Wikipedia at some point. 
And we realized early on, in part uh, with a lot of good advice from Ben, that we don't know what we're doing about Wikipedia, and we need to get some real people involved in Wikipedia to help us on this whole thing. But we did launch this thing, and we've gotten some attention. Uh, in the last three days, we've had uh, tweets from uh, Bill McKibben, who's the leading climate change writer and organizer in the world, I'd say, and Mike Grun, head of the Sierra Club, and Bill Maher. So we're getting some good attention and, uh, and a great article in uh, um, uh, Moyers and Company about the project and what we intend to do. And it's, it's all at climatecongress.us. .info is .us is the main site. Anyway, so we're continuing to work on this. After the election, we plan to uh, continue on it with getting ready for the next Congress with all the people coming in, having information about all of them, and we're crowdsourcing. And at the same time, one of the other goals is to recruit a group of uh, what I would call climate Wikimedians. Wikimedians who think climate is really important, love what's already at Wikipedia, and think there can be a lot more. And if I had to sort of say where we're ending up, we would love for, uh, it's on the idea that, that climate change can get more and more important to everybody in the world over the next period of time, we all know that. So every person who has an article in Wikipedia who's involved in arts, culture, politics, science, economics, whatever, what they say and do about climate change is important. And so our long-term goal would be to, for every one of those people to have a section about what they, they uh, what about them and climate change that people can find on Wikipedia. That's our big goal. But we're starting with politicians and uh, congressional. And so we would love help from, from you guys, advice, Anyone you know who lives and eats and breathes Wikipedia who can give us some, you know, some help and so forth. So we can, we're not even ready to approach the people who spend a lot of time on Wikipedia uh, doing climate related articles and editing and so forth. You know, so we're really early on. So we, we need to expand our, our team uh, and that's what we're trying to do. So we're do it locally with San Franciscans and virtually people anywhere. So anybody, uh, you know, just, Talk to me about it, and, and uh, I think this is something that can really take off in the next couple months. So thanks. I have been very lonely for a very long time. I have uh, made uh, many thousands of edits and contributed many thousands of dollars over the last maybe eight years or so. And I have looked for uh, opportunities to meet other people that work on Wikipedia and been not very successful. I've come to a number of the uh, uh, technical meetings here at the foundation. Uh, the last time I was here was about a year ago, and after that experience, I didn't want to come here today because I, I was treated so rudely down there in the lobby. And one thing I can say is that that situation has been corrected. But the last time I was here, it just about drove me away permanently. I hear that there's a lot of effort to get people together, and I just sort of found out about this thing by accident going through my email. Maybe there's a problem with signal to noise ratio. I don't know what it is. I did not really understand what Wikisalon was, nor do I understand quite what's going on tomorrow. I plan to be here tomorrow. Um, I'm really glad that some people are working on this. I, I really wanted to go to San Diego. It just didn't work out. I had too many other obligations at the time. But I think we need to have a way of, of getting together face to face, uh, you know, eight or nine years of dealing with this over the internet and not knowing the people that I'm working with and not being able to walk down and ask somebody a question and know and, and get a feeling like, you know, in my job, I have a feeling for who knows what and I can go and have a conversation with them. And with Wikipedia, I feel very, very lonely. I think I can speak for Ben and say that everything that you said is the reason that he wanted to start a wiki salon. And I, 
I still don't understand completely what it is because he's never completely told me, but we're slowly figuring it out. And you can help us do that. You can help define it. Sorry, I didn't remember to mention this when I was talking earlier. Um, FAE, F-E-A-E on the English Wikipedia, has uh, gotten a grant for an LGBT featured photo drive. Basically, we're trying to improve coverage of LGBT people and related topics on commons. Um, so there's going to be cash prizes for the first two submissions uh, once the contest starts, which is tentatively November 1st, but it's been pushed back a couple times. So there will be an announcement, you know, there'll be a banner and everything once it is actually open. But just so people are thinking about it now, there will be cash prizes for the first two uh, LGBT themed photos to reach fe featured picture status on Commons. So hopefully that'll get us some more uh, good content on there. And I'm not officially in charge of the contest. I'm just spreading the word about it. So, hello. Uh, my name is Clayton. I. Uh, I went to Wikicon. Uh, it was my first experience with uh, Wikipedia or Wikimedia. A very, very positive experience. Uh, learned a lot. And uh, first night here at a at a salon. And I look forward to future ones and to learning more about uh, how how I can help edit and uh, spread knowledge, particularly about uh, art and whatnot. Thank you. Hi everyone, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Juan Lara, I'm a documentation engineer. And uh, I'm mainly interested in contributing to MediaWiki through documentation, but if you're interested in anything about technical writing in general, um, yeah, come talk to me. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Juliet uh, on the communications team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, and um, I've been in, involved in this just um, a little bit as a, as a host and, and um, just providing a little bit of logistical uh, support and um, making sure the doors are open. Uh, uh, but uh, I would like to, I, I mean, I really hear the interest and the motivation to have more people at events like this. And um, so I'm, I'm interested in, you know, working with Ben and Wayne and anyone else who's interested to spread the word. And uh, we are headquartered here in San Francisco. We've got a nice space. And um, we should welcome people in. So I'm setting up a call with, with you and Wayne. <laughs> I just want to like <laughs> give me a mic. Um, my name is uh, Margarita. Last name is Nathpaktitis. My handle is Nathpaktitism. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I just moved to the Bay Area from um, Los Angeles. I'm a librarian, actually, for Slavic and East European Studies at um, the UCLA Library. Um, I was also the instruction coordinator there, and in that position, I actually um, ran several different kinds of editathons, Wikipedia editathons. And I have to say that Pete Forsyth was the one who kind of like sucked me into the whole Wikipedia world. I took his School of Open class, um, which is fantastic, um, really early on because. Um, in a previous life, I was also a professor of Russian literature and um, just realized how many times when I was doing last minute prep for my lectures, the first hit was Wikipedia. It was often really helpful and I'd throw something from Wikipedia in there. So this notion of, you know, but then you always tell your students, you know, you can't cite Wikipedia. So I just had a real problem with that and thought there would be a better way to engage um, and it turned out to be true. So I've thought a lot about what it means to teach with Wikipedia um, as a librarian at UCLA. Um, once I transitioned to being a librarian, um, I worked with um, especially one, one faculty member quite a bit, Tobias Higby, who actually teaches a class on um, labor and social justice where he assigns Wikipedia research and articles in his class. That was super interesting. Um, but I also had organized edit-a-thons 
with librarians to get um, them to put in external links to like really cool actual digital content that related to articles that were going, you know, that, that already existed. Um, also, our Plus Feminism edathons that happened around LA and um, a really fantastic series of edathons that basically a woman named Stacy Allen organized um, called Unforgetting LA, which always happened in spectacular locations, like amazing libraries and galleries and art spaces. Um, where we were encouraged to get people, people of color, uh, women, um, other under, underrepresented groups into Wikipedia by starting articles. She had a really neat approach to doing that. So I've actually um, created my fair share of articles and edited a bunch of other ones. And now that I'm in the area, the first thing I did was try to figure out if there's anything going on in Stanford, because I'm at Stanford now, still the librarian for Slavic and East European studies. So I've actually done edits in Polish and Russian Wikipedia, <laughs> and Greek, actually, I know, thank you, yes. Um, but, um, and uh, I've been asking around, but I'm still new, um, and I like to continue to, you know, help coordinate edit-a-thons. Um, looks like there's a new Facebook group that just started two days ago called Libraries and Wikipedia, which I'm excited about. Um, I think librarians are kind of in a unique position to help make more information, open access through Wikipedia by you know helping out with the resources that we have available. Anyway, that's me. So I'm trying to get sort of connected to what's going on in the Bay Area now that I'm here. So one one of the favorite people that I met at Wiki Conference was a librarian from Georgia. Also, also. Uh, one of the keynote speakers was Marilee Prophet. Oh, sure. And uh, she was a presenter the same time Pax was? Or no, different, different. We had a, yeah, it was the next, next, next one where we had a presentation. But at Wiki Conference, I was uh, registering people and I got thirsty. And she was giving this giant keynote express uh, keynote speech, and as I walked by the auditorium that she was in to get some water, I heard her say, "And at the Bay Area Wiki Salon." I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> my name is Leila. I'm a research scientist here at Wikimedia Foundation. Um, what I do mostly during the day job is basically working on research projects related to recommendation systems for what to be created on Wikipedia. Um, so these are articles to be created, links to be added, um, topics to be added, sections to be added, anything recommendation related uh, for editors. Um, I'm also interested in uh, kind of understanding readers who are the readers of Wikipedia? Why do they come to the site? What are they trying to achieve? Um, how much we are satisfying their need or should be satisfying their need? Um, so these are kind of the two main topics that I'm interested in. Um, but then during volunteer time, um, I am a Wikilove's monument organizer. So I work with the international team um, as an organizer. And I also organize Wikilove's monument for Iran. Um, I'm originally from Iran. Um, yeah, so that's about me. This, this was fun. I mean, so one of the benefits of having a small group is that you get to talk to each other. And, you know, I, one of the things is we get to talk, like, one-on-one -on -one or, like, in these small groups, but when you have a mic, it's like, wow, I have a mic, and I can, like, expound. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, so, yeah, it's, you know, in some ways, a small group is more fun. Um, nothing wrong with it. That's, that's all. So we have about another 45 minutes or so, and we can just hang out, eat food, have fun, talk one-on-one, one-on-three, -on -one, one -on edit, whatever you want to do. Pull up your own private corner. Pull up the booth. And you don't have to be here for 45 minutes. <laughs> we had one person last month that came for like five minutes and then bolted. But we said we said in our invita in our invitation, just come by even to to say hi, and then when they left, we were like, "What did we do wrong?" <laughs> no, Wayne was worried. I wasn't worried. 
is Our talk page list is uh, 154. Then our, we have a San Francisco email list that's moderated by somebody, and I've never asked how many subscribers there are. And then we also have an internal email list from people that have expressed interest in coming here or who have attended, and that's about 150. One, one thing is in this space, the lights can be turned down and these Christmas lights can come on and it becomes kind of uh, disco-y. And around, around the poles and music. <laughs> I also wanted to mention that Basically, right now is the fourth anniversary or fourth birthday of Wikidata. And uh, they're celebrating birthdays all over the world for the next week. And I just found out about the San Francisco celebration, which happened today at noon. And I showed up, and it was me and another guy and a cake. And the, and the rest of the cake's in the back. I mean, I think it's a good reminder, Felix, to just try new things, you know, you know, not, not, not be afraid of the consequences. So, you know, if you throw a party, at least when I try to throw a party, and nobody shows up, then I feel really sad, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think we could find something that would be like, yeah, we could have, we'd do several draws, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but what I was going to say is just like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, you set yourself up uh, with a stoic philosophy, and you're like, okay, nobody might show up, but at least there's Wayne. So, you know, um, I, I'm not too worried about it. But, yeah, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Um, we've explored draws. I think, like, you know, if we had Guy Kawasaki come, we'd probably draw a ton of people. Not that we really want to do that, but because um, it might just be too many people. But, eh, yeah. There are ways we could draw a lot of people. I think it was the the number, but that is a good idea. So we need to find an excuse to have a party like that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I mean one of the interesting keys about like I was like, oh we should just be persistent about growing this community. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean one of the interesting things about growing this community is that um yeah, I mean parties are fun. Let's talk about Wikipedia, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like, oh, if we're going to contribute, we're going to be editing. And, like, that's a very hard place to control because you get into editing, as Felix found, it turns, you know, pretty serious and kind of stressful pretty quickly. So, but, yeah, I think in general, just, like, getting people who are interested together in the same room is cool, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very different. Yep, yep. And like, I think you can throw like a great like party party, and there's plenty of blue, booze flowing. But at the end of the day, no, nobody there actually, you know, actually learns anything more about Wikipedia in a real way, or they may not even stick very much at all. Um, so, and, and I guess that's sort of like 
one of my goals is to get people to actually be sort of more integrated into the on the online editing community. But that's yeah, yeah, maybe they can do both. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I mean, no, that's not like my only goal. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I like to party. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, with my 22 ounce. Anyway. <laughs> A lot of people take off like Christmas Eve to New Year's Day or something. Yeah, so that's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't just keep doing it that At our first event, uh, Pete Forsyth predicted we would have 50 people. And a couple days before, we had like 10, and I was, I was gonna be happy if we got 12, and then we got 50. And we're not, like Ben says, we're not going for numbers, and it's not a competition, it's just that the more people that come to something like this, the more it can web its way out into the community. I had one more thing to say, but I forgot. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, every story triggers another story. I'd like to give a big shout out to uh, Brandon for doing our AV.